The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. So, for those of you that don't know, I'm a pretty big fan of the Zelda series. And when I got my Switch, I've put in well over 200 hours into the game. Well, someone was very nice to me and bought me some DLC, which included this thing called a Korok mask. So, in Breath of the Wild, there's like 900 of these little Korok guys. Sometimes they're under a rock, sometimes you have to solve a small puzzle to find them, but you don't always know where they are. That's where the Korok mask comes in. So if you're wearing the mask and you get near one of these Koroks, it shakes a little bit, makes some sprinkles, and there's a pinwheel on top that spins. So today, we're gonna make a motor project using PWM to make our pinwheel spin on top of a Korok mask. Previously, I've used potentiometers to control the speed of my motors. Now, what that does is it either increases or decreases the resistance in the circuit, which increases or decreases the voltage supplied to the motors. But a lot of that energy is lost to heat. So this time, we're gonna use PWM. So let's say our circuit has a six volt power supply. Now, if we turn our potentiometer so that our motor is only getting supplied three volts, it's still getting a steady three volts, and the other three volts is being lost to heat through the resistor. It's not very efficient. PWM stands for pulse width modulation. So what it does instead is it'll always supply a maximum of six volts or it'll supply zero volts. So what it does is it turns the power supply on and off. So what you'll do is you'll turn it on for six volts for a little bit and then off and it'll be zero volts for a little bit. And then back up to six volts and down to zero volts. And what happens is you end up getting like an average of the difference between when it's on versus when it's off. So it ends up evening out to about three volts, but you don't have any power loss because it's either just on or off. So today I'm going to use a 555 timer to provide our PWM to control our motor. Let's build our circuit. Here's the diagram for our circuit. We'll start with the 555 timer, the brain of our circuit. First, we're gonna place our 555 timer, making sure that pin one is in the upper left-hand corner, which you can tell because that's where this little dot is. Or sometimes there'll be a little notch here and that needs to be on the top. As you can see from the schematic, pin one goes to ground, so we're going to add a black wire there and leave that loose to solder later. Next we'll do pin two. If you can look on the schematic, pin two has three connections. It has a diode coming from pin seven. It's also connected to pin six, and it goes down and connects between C1 and D1, the capacitor and diode. So we'll start by adding a diode. We're gonna do this a little bit funky, and we're going to connect it over the top of the 555 by connecting pin two and pin seven. Next, we'll add a jumper between pins two and pin six. For now, we'll add an extra hookup wire to pin two that will later go between C1 and D1. From pin three, I'm going to add a 1K ohm resistor and it's going to go to the base of our transistor. I'm gonna bend the collector and emitter of the transistor down away from each other for use later. You can see on the schematic that pin four and pin eight are jumped together, so we'll add a hookup wire for that, and then we'll add a red wire next to pin eight because that will go to power later.
to pin 5, we're going to connect a 10 nanofarad capacitor, and the other lead of that will later connect to ground. Pin 6 is all set because it needs to be connected to pin 2, and we have already made all of those connections there. Pin 7 is already set with its diode, but then we need to add the variable resistor. To control our circuit, I'm going to use this pressure sensitive resistor. Now what I'm going to do is make it so I can hold it in my hand and pinch it between my fingers. So I need to run wires from that long enough to go up my sleeve and to my head where the circuit board is going to be. The plastic on the variable resistor is really sensitive to heat, so you want to keep heat on those leads for as short a time as possible. Since the pressure resistor is going to be hooked up to wires, I'm going to add a female header pin with one pin going to pin 7, and the other one will later go to our potentiometer. Next, we're going to add our 100 kilo ohm potentiometer. We're going to line this up so that the wiper pin will go to the female header pin here, and then one of these is going to go up to a 10K resistor, and another one will go to uh, down to a 10K resistor. One of the 10K resistors going to the pot, the other end is going to go to power. Uh, conveniently, pin 8 is also going to power, so we can patch this pin right into this little cluster right here, and the other 10K ohm resistor is going to go to a diode, so we'll add that. Next, we're going to make quite a few connections. We need to add our 47 nanofarad capacitor, which is going to connect to this diode here, as well as bringing this joint down from pin 2 and 6. Uh, then everything else needs to be connected to ground, so we're going to connect the spare lead of our first capacitor, uh, the other lead of this capacitor, so that'll be C1 and C2, as well as the emitter here of our transistor. That's the one with the tab, so we're going to do that. Okay, so we have pins from both of our capacitors and the emitter of our transistor that all need to be connected to ground. If you remember back to pin 1, we left this black wire here that's going to be ground as well. So we can tie this wire into that little cluster and then later we can connect pin 1 to the power ground pin to get those all connected to ground. We're almost done with our circuit. All we need to do is add that last diode and pins for the motor. So we need to make sure that the positive pin of the diode and the negative portion of the motor are connected to the collector of the transistor. And then that the negative pin of the diode and the positive pin of the motor end up going up to the positive power supply. The last thing we need to do is add our power supply. I'm using a 6 volt battery pack that uses two CR2032 3 volt batteries. 
I've already added a female header pin to the end of the battery pack. So I need to add male header pins to my board. The negative, as we remember, only needs to connect to pin one here. And the positive portion needs to connect to our motor, which is also connected to our diode, as well as pin eight, this extra power pin, which also connects to this resistor. All right, so my circuit's done, so now I gotta work on the motor. I've got this headband I'm gonna use to mount everything, so I gotta figure out where my pinwheel's gonna go. So let's see if we've got, according to the way the mask looks on the video game, probably stick out something like that. So probably about here, let's see. Mark that with my Sharpie. Beep, beep, boop. All right. Let's assemble this thing. Well, I think the next thing this mask needs is some sound effects, but that's for another day. If you have any suggestions for projects you'd like to see on the show, especially if they're Zelda related, I'd love to hear about those and you can post those on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning. Yahaha! Yeah, Yahaha!